What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. So we've gotten tons of updates in Season of Discovery over the past two weeks. Yes, it's only been two weeks since Phase 3 has launched. We've gotten some class tuning and a bunch of changes there with some Nightmare Incursion stuff. The Righteous Orbs that people have been farming have also been changed. And then even some runes from Phase 1 that may seem really hard to obtain right now. I mean, we're talking... 50 to 60 gold depending on your server to get a phase one rune has also been changed so without further ado let's dive in so for those phase one runes that i'm talking about i don't know if you guys remember but back in phase one you needed to farm some mats including dark iron ordinance in order to unlock this vendor and be able to purchase your runes right now it would cost you between 50 to 60 gold depending on your server. Some servers might be even more, but now you do not need to do this any longer. You can basically come right here on in Ratchet, uh, come speak to Grisby, and what you can do is just purchase the rune for three gold. It's completely removed. You used to be able to come here and you had a hand in the fish oil, the shredder turbochargers, and the dark iron ordnance. You no longer need to hand any of those in. I have not done that on this character. You could just talk to him as a vendor and pick up your rune. As you can see, I was just able to obtain main gauche, which I never did those prerequisites here on the rogue because you can see they're still here this is pretty big for some other classes especially warriors um, and shamans right the dual wield specialization rune now just purchasable with three gold without going through all that trouble and for warriors warbringer is massive if you are trying to pvp and then obviously you have the runes for every single class we have rewind time for mages survival for druids rune of the pact for warlocks the dual wield rune for shamans sacrifice for paladins lone wolf for hunters and again warbringer for warriors so that is a really good change and in my opinion this is great because this shows that they are thinking of those phase one runes and may start making them easier to obtain now that nobody is doing that stuff now on top of that we've gotten a bunch of class changes and changes to things like items in the game such as the flasks of atalai mojo and the nightmare incursion so let's go over all of these changes that have already been implemented right now so just for those general Season of Discovery changes that just dropped yesterday, we have some NPCs that are now guarding the Nightmare Incursion Quest Givers and Quartermasters. So outside of Nightmare Incursions, where you're handing in and picking up all of those quests, or even accessing the Quartermaster to purchase gear, there are now NPC guards there, and it's no longer a bloodbath. Right there. Inside the portal, completely different story, still an absolute bloodbath. The Atalai Mojo consumables, which were basically those flasks that you can pick up with using those flasks of Atalai Mojo, are now stackable up to two, up from one. It didn't make sense for them to be one, which was kind of weird, so it's nice that they now made them unique. Two, there is also now a 2.60 speed version of the offhand weapon Serpent Striker available from Zalgo the Explorer on your Jamba Isle in exchange for the 1.5 speed version. The drop rate of Nightmare Seeds inside Sunken Temple has increased by roughly 30%. The Sigil of Living Dreams no longer requires a Nightmare Seed as a reagent. Players should no longer occasionally gain no bonus blood when near Kadamu and affected by Feast of Blood. Players will now gain the Honorless Target effect whenever they enter a or leave a Nightmare Incursion portal, which this is really nice, but from my experience in the past 24 hours, it hasn't really helped and it's still an absolute bloodbath, which is, I guess, part of the fun, really, if you're not trying to level super fast. The Rainbow Generator should now appear for Troll, Tauren, Night Elf, and all other races. The Grizzworks Defense Industries has achieved record growth thanks to the efforts of adventurers across Azeroth, and Grisby is now pleased to offer runes to heroes without requiring quests from them, which I just showed you guys. Grisby over in Ratchet, you can now just purchase your Phase 1 rune, which for some classes is extremely important for 3 gold without doing those prerequisite quests. Moving into some class changes for Druids, Star Surge no longer consumes clearcasting procs from Omen of Clarity. Skull Bash Rune has been moved to the hand slot up from the leg slot, and Lacerate was moved to the leg slot from the hand slot, with Lacerate's threat being increased substantially. So this is really nice, and this puts on the table that Blizzard is willing to move rune slots around depending on how the class is performing. So that's really important to note. 
Very nice change for Bear Druids right there. And just good to know that if we need some rune slots changed up to make something feel a little bit better, it's on the table. For Hunters, we have Chimera Shot no longer refreshes Serpent Sting at one less damage per tick. And for Mages, Impact can now be triggered by the damage from Molten Armor. Deep Freeze will no longer deal damage to players who are temporarily immune to stuns. Deep Freeze can no longer be overwritten by an Impact stun unless the new stun would be longer than the remaining duration on Deep Freeze, with some developer notes here stating, Previously, if you Deep Froze a target and they were hit with an Impact stun, you could accidentally overwrite a 5 second stun with a 2 second stun. Now you can't overwrite it unless Deep Freeze is under 2 seconds. So a nice change there for mages. Paladins, we have Light's Grace Rune moved to the Bracer slot from the Helm slot. And the mana return of Seal of Martyrdom has been increased significantly. Eye for an Eye now also works on damage over time crits, which is really Really nice for Paladins. For Priests, we have Eye of the Void can no longer engage in melee combat. Eye of the Void's spell now all have a 35 yard range. Surge of Light's instant cast effect will no longer be consumed if Surge of Light was gained while casting Smite or Flash Heal. And Martyrdom now works to prevent pushback on Void Zone casts. For Rogues, we have a focused attacks change that now puts it up to three additional energy gained instead of two. For Shamans, a tiny bit of a nerf here on the internal cooldown of Overcharge has been increased to 3 seconds. As for our Warlocks, Life Tap now grants mana return to Warlock Pets, which is enormous. Unstable Affliction's damage has been increased by roughly 120%, and yes, this does include the Dispel Burst damage. So it's quite a big buff to Unstable Affliction, and Warlocks are going to be pretty hard to fight in PvP. Warlocks with Metamorphosis active and the Master Demonologist talent will now gain increased threat generation when they summon an Imp or Felguard. Was decreased before, so now it's going to be increased. And for our Warriors, we now have Victory Rush's heal increased to 30% of the Warrior's health, up from 10%. Moving on to our next order of business, I'm sure if you have not been living under a rock, you've noticed over the past few days that people were able to farm righteous orbs for crusader enchants inside season of discovery well this is not the case any longer as of yesterday blizzard released a post stating with a hot fix that went live on all realms earlier today righteous orbs no longer drop during phase three of season of discovery they'll become available as intended in phase four so you can no longer farm those righteous orbs the people who have them that's all you've got. But don't worry about this too much. I did hear that if you are using them for Crusader enchants on Warcraft logs, they will be voided out. So that is good to know. It's not like the logs are going to become super scuffed because of this. And moving on to our last order of business, let's take a look at the DPS logs for week two in Sunken Temple. In the number one spot, clearly we have melee hunters just absolutely pumping. Rogues have made their way back up to number two here on the list, right under melee hunters, and then they are followed up closely by our DPS warriors. Now, most warriors in Sunken Temple have been running arms. However, there's going to be a swap this week, including myself and everyone in my raid group. We have now changed over to Fury, so let's see what these logs look like next week. Right behind our warriors, we have Enhancement Shamans, Ranged Hunters, Frost Mages, Ret Paladins, Feral Druids, Fire Mages, DPS Warlocks, Elemental Shamans, Tank Rogues, Balanced Druids, Tank Warriors, and Shadow Priests under those tanks, followed up by Tank Pallies, Tank Warlocks, Tank Shamans, and Tank Druids. So the logs are kind of turning out to be exactly what we thought they would be for this phase. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What class are you playing and does it feel good in the raid. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you today as far as updates go. I have my first Sunken Temple tonight as a Fury Warrior, so I'm pretty excited. And if you want to watch the stream, head over to twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I will be streaming it live. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know myself and my other two warriors in my group have switched over to Fury, so I'm really, really interested to see how this goes. But if you guys enjoy this content and want to support the channel, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. But thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.